In the history of heavy equipment, there are machines that revolutionize their industries, and then there are machines that simply disappear into obscurity despite their incredible engineering achievements. The Clark 675 wheel loader belongs firmly in the second category. In the 1970s, this was the world's largest wheel loader ever produced, tipping the scales at 176 metric tons. The behemoth stood on the biggest tires ever manufactured for a production machine. Yet despite its record-breaking specifications, only a few units were ever built, and today, a lot of people in the heavy equipment industry have never even heard of it. This is the story of the Clark 675, a forgotten giant that promised to reshape mining operations, but instead became one of the most unfortunate commercial failures in construction equipment history. The birth of the Clark 675 is directly related to the landscape of open pit mining in the late 1960s. During this period, mining operations were growing exponentially in scale. Open pit copper mines, coal operations and iron ore facilities were digging deeper and moving more material than ever before. The equipment used in these operations was scaling up accordingly. Electric rope shovels and hydraulic excavators were getting larger which meant the haul trucks were getting bigger, and consequently, the support equipment needed to keep pace. Clark Equipment Company, headquartered in Buchanan, Michigan, was already a respected name in the construction equipment world. They manufactured forklifts and a range of wheel loaders. In 1953, Clark even purchased the Michigan Power Shovel Company and developed a new division dedicated to large-scale earth-moving equipment. But while Clark was a well-established name in the sector, it lacked presence in the ultra-heavy-duty mining segment. Something companies like Marion or Busiris Erie were already very familiar with. From the mid-1960s, Clark scratched the surface of what a big mining wheel loader could be with the introduction of the 475 model. The machine was big. It weighed 75 metric tons, developed about 700 horsepower, and came with a 12 cubic meter bucket. The 475 was later upgraded to the B and C models, and this loader would serve as a basis for what Clark was trying to achieve. A loader more than double the size of the 475. Something that doesn't sound like an unachievable challenge today, but it sure was in the mid-60s. Development of the 675 began in 1967. Clark's engineering team faced immense challenges since they weren't just scaling up an existing design, they were venturing into entirely uncharted territory. But in the summer of 1970, Clark unveiled two pre-series units of the 675. These initial machines were powered by two General Motors engines working in tandem. The dual engine configuration was necessary because no single engine available at the time could provide the power needed to move a machine of this size with the performance characteristics required for production mining work. These pre-production units served as test beds. Clark engineers needed to verify that the fundamental concept was sound, that the drivetrain could handle the stresses, that the hydraulic systems could operate reliably under extreme loads, and that the overall machine could perform the work it was designed for. The testing phase in Arizona's copper mines revealed many areas that needed improvement, and Clark went back to the drawing board to refine the design. It wasn't until 1973 that the Clark 675 officially reached the market as a production model. This was the Lot 3 version, representing the third major iteration of the design and incorporating all the lessons learned from the pre-series machines. The production 675 featured significant improvements over the initial prototypes. Most notably, Clark switched from General Motors power plants to a pair of Cummins diesel engines. Combined, these two power plants developed 1,400 horsepower. This massive power output was necessary to move the loader's immense weight something the mining sector had never seen before. The standard bucket capacity was 24 cubic yards. To put that in perspective, that's enough volume to hold approximately 40 tons of material in a single pass. The machine measured 53 feet in length, that's 16 meters, almost the same as a typical bowling lane. The giant loader had a gross weight of 176 metric tons, or 390,000 pounds. 
but perhaps the most visually striking feature of the 675 was its tires. The loader sat on 67-inch Goodyear tires, the largest production tires in the world at that time. Each tire was over 10 feet tall and represented a significant engineering achievement in its own right. These massive tires were necessary to distribute the loader's weight and provide the flotation needed to operate on the unpaved, often unstable surfaces of mine sites. The 675, often designated as the Clark Michigan 675, was designed to work in the most demanding mining environments. Its dual-engine powertrain provided not just enough power, but also redundancy. If one engine experienced problems, the machine could, at least in theory, keep operating on a single engine, though at reduced capacity. More than twice the size of the 475 model, the 675 impressed, not just because of its size, but because of its price tag. In the early 1970s, a single unit sold for over $2 million, which sounds like a bargain today, but was way too much for that time. As the few units in operation started suffering major downtimes, word spread across the industry about the machine's potential reliability issues. Potential buyers got cold feet. And soon enough, Clark had to face another major problem, competition. Clark's window of holding the title of world's largest wheel loader was relatively long. But as the record held, companies like Caterpillar, Letourneau and Komatsu watched and learned from the 675's weaknesses. Very quickly, the Clark 675 was seen more as a factory prowess than a true workhorse able to actually move mountains. Many mining companies kept relying on pairs of smaller loaders, proven cheaper to run than facing the 675's recurring downtimes. Only a couple of years after its official introduction, sales spoke louder than words. The giant mining loader was already in trouble. And as a major crisis in the sector was approaching, production of the beautiful beast couldn't be sustained for too long, and Clark knew it way too well. Despite its impressive specifications and record-breaking size, the Clark 675 never achieved commercial success. The numbers tell a stark story. Only 14 units were ever manufactured. For a machine that took years to develop and represented a massive investment in engineering and tooling, this was a catastrophic outcome. Of those 14 original machines, two units were later converted to 675C specification. This upgraded version featured improvements and refinements, but it was too little, too late to change the model's fortunes. In 1976, just three years after the production model reached the market, Clark discontinued the 675. However, the decision wasn't exactly official. The company maintained the machine on their price lists and continued to offer it for sale until 1988, even during the early days of the Volvo Clark Michigan venture. During those 12 additional years, not a single unit sold, which surprised nobody. The relative failure of the Clark 675 wasn't just due to engineering issues or inadequate performance, it was also a matter of timing and demand. By the time the 675 was phased out, the mining sector was facing one of its most significant crises ever. And while companies like Clark didn't seize the opportunity to reinvent the wheel during those hard times, others did. Caterpillar began sketching what would later become the highly successful 994 loader, and Komatsu started drafting what the WA-1200 would one day be, two machines very close to the 675's original specifications. Other manufacturers, such as Le Tourneau, also saw an opportunity and began developing giant loaders like the L-Series, which would soon set world records once thought unimaginable when Clark launched its 675. The story of the Clark 675 wheel loader is ultimately a human story. It represents the ambition of engineers who pushed the boundaries of what was possible. It shows the courage of a company willing to invest heavily in an unproven concept. And it demonstrates the harsh reality that in business, being the biggest or the first isn't always enough. Today, modern mining operations use wheel loaders that dwarf even the 675 machines that build on the lessons learned from pioneers like Clark. The technology has advanced, the engines are more efficient, 
the hydraulics more sophisticated and the support infrastructure more robust. But the Clark 675 remains a unique piece of history. The world's largest wheel loader ever produced at the time of its creation, sitting on the world's largest tires. That alone is worth talking about. That alone is worth remembering. The Clark 675 wheel loader, a magnificent failure and a reminder that in the world of massive machines, size isn't everything until it is.